Hey, I'm Norm from TastePC.TV, and today I'm doing a review of the Ultimate Force, or TAF, Asus Sun Knight 7 Sabertooth Mark 1 board. Now, there are two variants of the ATX Sabertooth boards, the Mark 1 and the Mark 2. The Mark 1, which is the higher end ver variant and the one that I'm going to be looking at, um, is got things like Sator Express and the Thermal Armor, whereas the Mark 2 doesn't have like the Thermal Armor and stuff. So I'm going to try and make this video shorter than the last one, so hopefully it will be shorter than my last um, Sun Knight 7 motherboard review, but I will of course make sure to include things like how well it overclocks. So let's get started. Skipping straight to the Ultimate Force Sabretooth Mark 1 board itself, as I'm going to cover all the features highlighted on the box and the accessories as we're looking around the board, I have to say that I do really love the whole military look of the Sabretooth boards and I've always really wanted to use one in a build. I'd probably go for like the whole like complete military look, so pairing it with parts, as you can probably guess, with something like a Corsair C70 and like a Noctua cooler on fans. Um, I do think they've done a much better job with the Mark 1 with the design of this heatsink here and then down across the top of the rear I.O. than they did with the Z87 Sabretooth. Also the armor's lighter than it was with the Z87 Sabretooth and I think because of that and the obviously the checkered like metal effect in some lighting it does actually look like metal. So the Sabretooth Mark 1 is configurable with two different fans, a 35mm fan, which you mount here, either intaking or exhausting, and its job is to cool the bottom half of the board. Although I do worry that if you've got it intaking, it might pull hot air from your GPU straight underneath the armour and therefore raise your motherboard's temps, or if you've got it exhausting, it might suck in air from around the socket and kind of be a little bit redundant. So if I was setting up this board to use it, I don't think I'd fit this fan at all, and then hopefully the thermal armour will act as kind of like a heat shield, keeping the graphics card's heat away from the motherboard itself. You've also got a 40mm fan which you mount up here, um, which once again can be either intaking or exhausting and its job is to cool the top half of the board. If you do have it intaking, you don't have to worry about it pulling a load of dust from outside of your case straight into the motherboard, Zama, um, because firstly the rear I.O. has a dust filter which you can attach to it, which is cool, but also the fans have anti-dust technology where um, they kind of spin in reverse for a little bit just to kind of move any dust that may have settled inside the armour. You do also have these two flow valves, um, which are open at the moment, but you can close them like so, and what they do is they open the ventilation along here and along here, although you do always have these vents along here and along here open. So what you could do, for example, is you could have this fan intaking um, and these closed like so, and then it would pull cool air in from outside the case and kind of channel it down these tunnels, cooling the VRM MOSFETs. Or what you can do instead is you could have these open, um, this fan exhausting, and say if you're using like an air CPU cooler, then the airflow would kind of move over the VRM and MOSFETs that way instead. So you do have quite a lot of configuration options with the Sabretooth Mark 1 when it comes to cooling. There are also nine inbuilt temperature sensors dotted around underneath the armour, and the board also comes with an additional three temperature probes, which obviously you can kind of stick wherever you want. And you can monitor these using the Thermal Radar 2 software you can find in AI Suite 3, which does give you some pretty cool options, although I'm not actually going to be looking at the software or the BIOS in this video, just because I want to kind of try and keep the video's length as short as possible. As well as the thermal armour on the front of the board, we've also got a tough 45 back plate on the back, which helps the board's rigidity and prevents it from bending, which I do really love because I do have kind of a slight over tendency to sometimes over tighten my CPU coolers, and I have noticed sometimes the board tend to start to like bend under the strain. Whereas when I had this board on the test bench, as I've already done the test, it was just dead straight. The same as when I had my um, six formula on the test bench, which also has a back plate. So I do really love the back plate. Um, and it's also got a thermal pad underneath it to help heat transfer away from the the back of the board. Within the exclusive tough features you also get dust covers for everything, so like covers for the PCIe slots, covers for the rear IO and SATA ports, two memory ones for the two unused memory slots if you're only using two DIMMs, and also even ones for your GPU's ports, which is pretty cool and I do really love these because not only do I think they add to like the whole military look of the board, but they'd actually genuinely help protect your board from taking damage in high dust or particle environments. Um, but Asus have also added tough ESD guards, which have an anti-static chip and circuit design, to give you more protection against electrostatic discharge, which is pretty cool. So then with the power delivery for the Sabretooth Mark 1, we've got an 8-phase DigiPlus VRM digital power design. We've also got tough MOSFETs, our military-grade certified 10K titanium tough capacitors, new tough alloy chokes, which are a newer version of the ones found on the Z87 Sabretooth, um, and these have been designed for maximum durability as they've been made of a compound of various different types of metal rather than just standard iron. 
and this can support up to 40 amps. Um, but the board does actually come with a certificate of reliability, which is pretty cool, and it lists all the tests, the capacitors, chokes, and the MOSFETs pass that you can find on these boards. Um, so that's definitely very cool. But also the board comes with a five-year warranty, so you've definitely got some confidence there on how long it's going to last. But with a socket, it's 1150 and it can support Haswell, Haswell Refresh, Devil's Canyon and Broadwell processors. And with memory, we've got four slots of DDR3 dual channel uh, memory, which can support up to 32GB or 3300MHz. And then with the PCIe expansion slots, you've got two 3.060 next ones, although this slot is only actually wired at 8x, so your graphics cards will either run at 16x or at 8x, 8x. And the motherboard does come with a little SLI connector. We've also got a 2.0 16x slot, although this one's only wired at 4x, and then we've got three 2.01x slots. So then taking a closer look around the board, firstly we've got the 8-pin CPU power connector, we've got a little fan header for the 40mm fan, we've got a 3-pin fan header, and we've got two 4-pin PWM fan headers. Then over here we've got the DRAM LED, and as this motherboard doesn't have a Q-code readout, I'm just going to point some of these out as we're going around. We've also got a MemOK OK button, which you can use to reset your memory settings. So say for example you've just installed a new memory and you're having issues with it, press this. Um, we've also got another 4-pin PWM fan header and the 24-pin power connector. We've then got the CPU LED and the 35mm fan header. Then the device LED and a right-angled USB 3.0 header, which I do really like that it's right-angled because it means it is going to look a lot neater when you've got your cable plugged into it. Then along here we've got the SATA ports, and the Z97 Sabertooth Mark 1 comes with 6 SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports and a single SATA Express port. Um, all the right angled ones down here are powered by the native Intel PCH, but the two straight ones down here are powered by the Asmedia 1061 chip. And it is a shame that the armour didn't allow for these two to be up here as well, but I think as long as you use one of the cables with a right angle connector then it should still look quite neat. Um, but the board does come with four SATA cables, two of which have got right angle connectors. It is a shame it didn't come with more, but it is like a mid-range board. Um, now, because the SATA Express port is made up of two SATA 3 connectors and like a little additional connector, which provides two 2.0 PCIe lanes, um, because of that, it means you can either use the board with six SATA 3 6 gigabit per second connectors and a single SATA Express port, um, you know, as it comes, or if you'd prefer, you can use it as if it's got eight SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports and then just obviously lose the SATA Express port. And then down here we've got the front I.O. headers, and you do get these little connectors just to make it easier to plug in the front I.O. cables. We've also got a DRCT header where you can plug in, for example, like your restart button, and then if you press it, it will just boot you straight into the box rather than having to restart your computer and like spam delete. We've also got a clear RTC RAM header, which you use to clear the real-time clock in the BIOS, um, which is essentially the same as clearing CMOS. We've also got a CPU overvolt jumper, which you'll use if you're extreme overclocking. We've got the BIOS battery, and um, we've also got another 4-pin PWM fan header. We've then also got two USB 2.0 headers and a straight USB 3.0 header. So in total, this board can power four USB like, front connectors. We've then also got a Thunderbolt header, two 4-pin PWM fan headers. So in total, this motherboard has six 4-pin PWM fan headers. We've also got three headers for the temperature probes that came with the board, a front panel audio connector, a digital audio connector, a trusted platform module header, and an LPC debug header. And then up here, we've got a VGA LED. Now, when it comes to audio on the Sabertooth Mark 1, it's using a Realtek ALC 1150 chip, and it's got left and right track separation to help improve the sound quality, but also it's got a tough noise guard design just to help reduce interference. Then onto the rear I.O., we've got four USB 2 ports, the ventilation for the rear 40mm fan, and you do get the dust filter as I showed you before, the BIOS flashback button and port, four USB 3.0 ports, two of which are Intel, two are Asmedia, if I had to guess I'd say these two are the Asmedia ones, two gigabit LAN ports, one of which is Intel, I'm guessing this one, and that one is the Realtek one. We've also got a HDMI display port and the audio ports. And then lastly with the board, you also get some manuals, a CD, and a tough sticker. So moving on to the conclusion, firstly, the Sabertooth Mark 1 is around the same price as the Z97 Deluxe, which is a board I've already looked at. Um, if you only get the motherboard and not look all the accessories bundled with it as well. Um, and even though they are similarly priced, I find that the Sabertooth kind of misses out on some of the features you can find on the higher end boards in the generation. So for example, it's only got one Intel Gigabit LAN port rather than two, it's only got one State Express port rather than two, it doesn't have, you know, it's fancy audio. And this is all stuff that you can find on the Z97 Deluxe. So even though it's a similar price and it misses out on some of those features, I think that the tough exclusive features still make it something worth considering. Because not only do I think they personally make the board more appealing visually, 
but I do really like them. Like with the back plate, for example, it definitely makes the board more sturdy. And it kind of makes you less fearful to handle it, if you know what I mean, which is great for someone like me who's always moving around the board. And for example, the temperature sensors and the thermal radar software, I know I didn't take a look around that in the video, but I do really love that. I love knowing, you know, where's hot and just getting to play with the cooling and stuff. Um, also, I really love the thermal armour. Not so sure how tough the little tiny fans actually are, but, you know, if you don't want to use them, you don't have to fit them. And if you don't want them or the armour at all, then, you know, you can go for the Sabre Tooth Mark II. Now, in terms of um, overclocking, sorry, I what I did was I, um, I'll put my results up here and the test bench specs in the description below. But what I did is I wanted to see at 4.6 gigahertz, stable for two hours, what was the lowest fee core I could get with my i7 470K. And I've, what I'll do is I'll write down what I wrote in BIOS, then what BIOS registered it was actually running at, then what CPU said said that it was at while testing using ADA64, and then finally what the multimeter said, assuming the board's got multimeter readout point, which the Sabertooth doesn't. Um, so as you can see, the Sabertooth Mark One needed slightly less volts than the C97 Deluxe did to be stable, um, which even which is you know interesting because the C97 Deluxe has 16 power phase design and the Sabertooth Mark One only has an eight phase design, which tells you it's not about like the quantity of phases but the actual quality of the power design. So obviously the Sabertooth power design is military grade certified. So for the fact that you know you're getting like a decent, stable, high quality power delivery for how it looks and for all the other features, I think it's definitely worthy of my like sweet or recommended award. Um, so that was my review of the Ultimate Force um, Sabertooth Mark 1 Z97 board. My next Z97 review is going to be of an MSI board, so using the same overclocking settings will be interesting to see how the competing brands compare. Um, but if you like the video, hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more of my videos, and thanks for watching!